All of us have different reasons for getting on the graph. Maybe you started tinkering after you heard so much about it, how it was changing the landscape for developers, about how it was the next big thing. But then there was that, that moment, that point, for all of us, when we wrote that query and it just clicked. The way we built apps was never going to be the same again. And that moment is about an idea. It is a really simple idea. What if I could grab exactly what data I needed? That is what GraphQL means to us. That is what the idea is. That, if we're being honest, is why we're all here today. Apollo, along with so many other projects in the GraphQL community, was built on that idea, coming from that same aha moment. We had a vision to build a distributed data layer connected to everything we need. No matter the app, the architecture, the service, or the language, Apollo Client and Apollo Server became such popular open source frameworks because they helped developers accomplish that goal. First things first, probably the most frequent apprehension we hear from developers building out their GraphQL APIs is a sense of disconnect between how we begin and where we want to go. If we have learned one thing about the graph, about every graph, it's that it's going to evolve and expand. But working in one code base, stuffing everything into one schema, leads to bloat and breaking changes. It raises uncertainty and confusion about the right next step, tension about the best way to get there, debates about how fast to go, and, well, a real sense that this GraphQL thing could get out of hand. The super graph is a new way to think about GraphQL. So what we want is for you to be able to take the graph you've already built and say, OK, this isn't the end of the line. This is just my first module. Time to build something new? Let's do it in a new service. Want to refactor something out? That's easy. Put it in a module. Each module written in whatever language makes the most sense for that team, but still fully connected and integrated. All you have to do is understand entities. An entity is a thing in the graph that you can identify, like a user with an account number, or a product in a catalog. They're the mechanism behind joins and query execution, and they're what makes it possible to split your implementation and organize your graph in a natural way, by teams and by modules, instead of along strict type boundaries. And you already have the starting point for entities in your schema today. They're not new types or rewrites. For example, let's take this bank. It's just a matter of designating your entities and defining which fields serve as the identifier or the key. And you can use any field in your schema for the key. So again, you don't have to rewrite your schema or the systems that it models. And once you start defining keys, you can add fields that reference other entities in other modules, like loans and credit cards. But entities are more than just the glue behind joins across subgraphs. You see, if we truly want to build the distributed data layer connected to everything we need, it has to connect to everything. Up to this point, we've really focused on connecting data and services under our control. But the real prize is going beyond that. When we connect all our graphs together, some incredible things become possible. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of a travel company for a minute. And picture a screen in that app that shows the upcoming flights for a customer. And of course, we have a query powering that page. What we want to do here is add some information about your flight status that comes from, say, an airline partner. You've got a trip tomorrow morning. Let's show whether that flight's going to be on time, what gate it's going to be at. And naturally, we'd like to seamlessly add that to our query. Maybe something like this. Now, we can certainly write more data fetching code for those fields. 
but think about the code you'd have to write. This, this right here, is why software development can be so painfully slow and frustrating. But when the airline is on the super graph, we can do something a lot more interesting. So here's our schema with the trip. And here's the airline schema with a flight type that has the fields we need. And this is what we're adding to Federation next. Supergraph linking. It lets you link across types published by different companies. We didn't have to coordinate with the airline. We don't have access to their code. All we're doing is linking to their entity from ours. We fetch the trips from our subgraph and then fetch flight status from the airline. Simple enough. And by the way, if that fetch to the airline is slower than we'd like, we're in the super graph now. So we can just put defer on this. But federation isn't just about referencing external entities. It also allows subgraphs to extend entities with additional fields. Think about companies that provide seat reviews for different aircraft, or companies that offer carbon offsets for your trip. Links allow them to extend the airline's flight type with their properties and their capabilities. And that lets us write queries like this. Queries that can reference any part of the global supergraph in whatever combination I want. So we can actually fetch the carbon emissions part of the result in parallel with the flight status data coming back from the airline. Everything we want, everything we want in one query. GraphQL was about an idea, and the global supergraph is the realization of that idea. One distributed data layer connected to everything we need. And so this is what entities and federation are really about. It's what we designed them for from the beginning. They get you the modular architecture you need, and they give you a path to advanced features like defer. But really, they're the building blocks of something much bigger. The old world of REST APIs is disconnected and fragmented. We have a different vision, the global supergraph. Anyone can publish into, extending and expanding what's already there. And each time they do, the graph becomes more and more valuable to everyone that's on it. And this possibility, and what it means for how easy it can become to write apps, and the kind of apps we can write, is the real reason I'm so excited for the supergraph and for what lies ahead. Enjoy the conference.